What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In this video I want to give you guys an updated version of the Rift Bilge that I'm using for my main character here in this second playthrough. I know you, some of you have been really looking forward to seeing that Sword and Board Reaver. Actually, I would really like your feedback about that because there are different ways that I can build that and I want to make sure that I'm doing it the way that you guys are looking forward to. So, I'm pretty sure that you guys wanted to see a DPS version of a sword and board reaver, not a tank, but I could be wrong. So let me know in the comment section whether you want to see like a DPS support sword and shield reaver build or if you want to see a DPS tank, kind of like what I just recently did with uh, Cassandra for the Templar. Let me know in the comment section. But uh, let's go ahead and get started at looking at the skills that I've got going on here for my rift mage i knew way before i even started this second playthrough that i really wanted to try out a, a rift mage build sure the night enchanter has uh, obviously some really cool things going for it but um i don't know i really like control builds as well and that's really what this specialization feels like it really specializes in is controlling kind of debuffing and stuffing stuffing and stuff like that for your enemies. Also, uh, one of the big criticisms that people have had with me in the past when including, for example, Static Cage is not including the Energy Barrage skill. Uh, I had Chain Lightning instead. And the debate with that is that people are like, by including Energy Barrage with Static Cage, it does incredible single target damage. And yes, I, I totally agree with that. However, there are not that many cases where you are focusing in on only a single target. For example, uh, maybe a boss like, uh, I don't know, Alexius or a dragon or something like that. In those somewhat rare cases, yes, that combination does wonders, but what I have found more useful in my experience is Chain Lightning with the upgrade Arcing Surge. But then again, I thought to myself as I was getting to this build, why not just have both? So as you can see, like I just decided to go with both. So I have the best of both worlds. I've got incredible uh, AOE damage that I can do with this build, controlling effects, um, all sorts of different debuffs, including weakening and stuff like that. And it's a, just a really fun build for me to play. So let's go over, as I normally do, with the uh, the storm skills here. Like I just talked about, Chain Lightning. Unleash a blast of lightning that shocks one target and arcs to nearby enemies. This hits for four times at 250% weapon damage and has a really nice short cooldown time of eight seconds. That was actually one of the other reasons why I preferred Chain Lightning is because it actually has a half the cooldown of energy barrage at 16 seconds. But anyway, <laughs> now if you're going to pick up Chain Lightning, you definitely want to pick up the upgrade Arcing Surge because this adds an additional two hits. So six hits at 250% weapon damage is very nice. Now with Energy Barrage, again, this is more of a single target type of uh, ability which has 12 projectiles, making this easily the best uh, skill when it comes to activating a masterwork perk. Now, for example, you could put uh, on hit gain guard or chance on hit uh, do another chain lightning or something like that. With 12 projectiles, each one of those hits counts as on hit, so you have a very good chance of, uh, of activating said perks. Now, with this ability, it only hits for 66% weapon damage, and like I said, it has twice the cooldown of chain lightning but their mana costs are the same, 50 mana. Now going down from here, it's uh, it's very difficult to decide which way to go because unfortunately it seems I'm getting lots of reports from people that a lot of these passives are not even working. I don't know if that is specific to certain platforms, PC or console, or maybe they're just not working on any of these platforms. So for example, Conductive Current, I think I've heard, doesn't actually work. I've also heard that Stormbringer doesn't work. Gathering Storm, or and I, I don't even see Static Charge working, so I'm not even sure really where to go properly from here, and I've really just been kind of hoping that BioWare will get to this and get to patching all of these passives and stuff like that. Uh, there's a reason why we don't go for Lightning Bolt here is because I'm already full up on skills, so there's no point in that. 
but uh, I don't know. Maybe one of these passives in and paths to getting to static cages working. Uh, pick your poison, I guess. But anyway, uh, I'm not even going to read off these descriptions because, like I said, we don't even know if they're working or not. Basically, you just want to get down to static cage. Trap your enemies inside an electric field that paralyzes those that try to leave. Now, the really awesome thing about static cage is the upgrade lightning cage, which is now powerful enough to hurt or even kill enemies who try to leave. Whenever an enemy in the cage takes damage, a lightning bolt strikes them, dealing bonus electricity damage. So at 50% weapon damage, they will get struck by lightning for every time they are struck by anything while inside of the static cage. So when you combine, for example, chain lightning, six hits at 250% weapon damage, plus all the additional strikes from static cage, is going to do great AoE damage to groups that are trapped in that cage. For energy barrage, if you've got a single target in there and you combine this with the static cage, it's a lot of damage and like I said, um, very good with, well I would say either one of these really, it, but certainly energy barrage is fantastic at activating on hit perks. Next up, we're going to take a quick stop over in the Winter Line. Fade Step, the more that I use this in my Mage builds, the more that I like it. I really liked Winter's Grasp before, but the more I messed around with Fade Step, and because it doesn't cost me any mana, the more I really like it. And in the middle, of course, I'm going for Winter Stillness. I make it a point while playing my Rift Mage to try and stand still as much as possible. And like I said, maybe only reposition myself every once in a while using Fade Step. But by standing still for just a couple of seconds, you gain mana regeneration rate of 50%. Alright, let's go over the Rift Mage skills that I've got chosen here. Veil Strike, you recreate your own fist from the essence of the Fade and smash nearby foes to the ground. An area of effect of 5 meters with a cooldown time of 24 seconds. The upgrade for Veil Strike, I... did I say Veil Strike? Veil Strike, punching <laughs> down. You cast Veil Strike more easily and the blow weakens your enemies, causing them to do less damage cost reduction of 15 mana which is quite nice and a weakened duration of 10 seconds down below there we have restorative veil you pull stray magic from around weakened enemies to regain mana based on the damage you do to them mana recovery 10 percent I don't have it unlocked yet, but I'm definitely going to take Smothering Veil. Weakened enemies have the damage they inflict reduced even further by 30%. At the bottom, Pull of the Abyss, you create a tiny rift that pulls enemies toward a central point. Area of effect, 6 meters for 12 seconds. Has a cooldown time of 32 seconds. The upgrade is a definite Shaken Veil. You can cast Pull of the Abyss more often and enemies caught in its effects are weakened by 10 seconds. This also gives a cooldown reduction of 8 seconds. Just above to the right of Pull of the Abyss, Twisting Veil. You catch stray magic around weakened enemies and use them to increase the damage of your own attacks. Damage bonus versus weakened, 15%. Above that, Encircling Veil. You use stray magic around weakened enemies to increase the power of status effects on them. Duration bonus versus weakened, 25%. And above that, we have Stone Fist. You summon a boulder from the fade and smash it into your target, sending them flying. Spirit damage of 500% with a cooldown time of only 8 seconds. The upgrade for Stone Fist, you can uh, take it or leave it if you like. I personally will definitely be unlocking this because this is another way that you can weaken your enemies. This is going to cause a massive explosion, uh, weakening and staggering nearby enemies from that impact point. Since we have all of these passives that take advantage of enemies that are weakened, I personally think that the more that you can keep your enemies weakened, then the better, definitely. Firestorm. You summon flaming meteors raining fire down upon enemies all over the area for the next several seconds. Tier 3 summons 55 meteors at 200% weapon damage over 15 seconds. It is awesome. Let's take a look now at a couple of examples of my updated Rift Mage build.
we were. Thanks for watching this video on my Rift Mage build here in Dragon Age Inquisition. I've had a ton of fun with this for my main character here in my second playthrough. If you're looking to make a mage build in the future, maybe in another playthrough, or maybe in the current playthrough that you're working with, I highly recommend this. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Click the like button to support these Dragon Age Inquisition videos, and stay subscribed, more is on the way. Thanks again for watching, my name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.